Shadow Over Ponyville Once upon a time, in a magical land of Equestria, there were two regal sisters who ruled together and defended the land from all threats. The eldest used her unicorn powers to raise the sun, and at dawn the youngest brought out the moon and began the night. Thus the two maintained balance for their kingdom and their subjects, all the different types of p ponies. But as time went on, the youngest sister became resentful. The ponies relished and replayed in the day. Her elder sister brought forth, but shunned and slept through her beautiful nights. One fateful day, the younger sister refused to lower the moon to make way for the dawn. The elder sister tried to reason with her, but the bitterness in the young one's heart had transformed her into a wicked mare of darkness, Nightmare Moon. She vowed that she would shroud the land in eternal night. Reluctantly, the elder sister did battle with the youngest for the fate of Equestria. At the time of their struggle, the youngest sister's body was broken and her spirit eternally trapped inside the moon. She loved so much. Since that day, the elder sister has controlled both the moon and the sun. Peace has reigned in Equestria. Twilight Sparkles frowned, her ears twitching in annoyance. Some pony had the audacity to add their own comments to what she considered a priceless tome. Although in her mind all tomes were priceless. See Ancient Predictions and Prophecy, page 238. They couldn't have just written their note on a piece of paper for their own reference. They had to mark up the library's books as if they owned it. Ponies these days. She thought had so little respect for the written words. She considered herself the exception, of course, as she had spent her entire life poring over ancient volumes of magic and thoughts. It was a requirement of her tutelage under Queen Celestia, but she had always considered it a perk more than a burden. Her hours of reading had left her with a most extensive knowledge of texts from the relatant related to the pre-classic era, which made it all the more annoying that she had never heard of ancient predictions and prophecies before, while some of her mouth-breathing certains was able to recall specific paid numbers from the text. Twilight decided it was time to correct this. The unicorn placed the book back in her saddlebags bag and stood up before heading back towards the, her study. Twilight's mind slow, was slowly chewing on the information in the text, comparing it to her own knowledge of equestrian history. For the entirety of equestrian history, they had been ruled over by their benevolent deity queen Celestia, and under her rule, ponies everywhere had prospered. In her twelve years of study, she had never come across any information that contradicted that. Now this book she had found sitting outside her door this morning hinted at a whole history of equestrian Drea that had been forgotten, or possibly hidden by some nefarious force. Wasting no time, she burst into a quick run. Spike! She yelled as she galloped into the, her chamber. I needed to find a copy of Ancient Predictions and Prophecies. Stat! Her sudden appearance had startled the infant dragon and caused him to fall from his ladder. With the books, he had restocked, trailing behind him. It seemed to him that every time he was in a position that required his utmost concern, she would burst in, barking orders to him. Twilight, for her part, failed to notice this, as she was usually busy trying to convince herself there was no grand conspiracy working against the crown of Equestria. Ancients! 
Ancient predictions and prophecies, huh? He said, as he got up on his feet. I think I saw that book the other day, when I was cleaning up after one of your all-night study sessions. Spiked walked past bookcases, after bookcases, each one seemingly dusty, then the last, till he finally came upon the terminal bookcase, where the book had seemingly sat undisturbed for centuries. He thought it was odd that neither he or Twilight had ever come, had cause to look through these books before, but then it seemed plausible to him that Twilight was slowly working her way towards the shelf, moving in a reverse order through the histories of Equestria. There on the far right of the lower shelf, there was a thick black volume he had first glimpsed over only a week ago. As he picked up the brown tome, a brief tremor ran through his body, and for a fleeting second, he had an irrational fear that this one act would somehow spell the doom for both Twilight and the world at large. Here it is, he said, putting his fear behind him as she magically ripped the book from his hand. Twilight quickly flipped through page upon page of the strange vistas and tabulas. One page, a thousand ponies were fused together. The next sort of strange creature Seemingly a misshapen of every animal under the sun. Finally, she reached the chosen page and began to read the, the selected entry. The mare on the moon or the dead queen. She said aloud as the aid, for the aid of her assistant. Myth from older ponies times. A powerful pony who wanted to rule Equestria defeated by the queen ascendant and imprisoned in the moon. Legend has it on the longest day of the thousandth year of the queen ascendance reigned. The stars will aid in her escape, and she will bring about eternal night. Meanwhile, far above Twilight Sparkle and the rest of Equestria, hidden by the lights of the sun, six stars slowly journeyed towards the moon, determined meant to make their point a meant and free the queen of nightmares. Despite the immense risk, Twilight found herself looking forward to the next few days of studying. She would have the chance to research the spells and magic to defeat Nightmare Moon and pore over both ancient and modern star charts. Taken together, it was a lovely combination of her favorite sayings Phamatology and astronomy. The two schools had always been interesting to her, and when her cutie mark, a starburst and five small stars surrounding magic, managed to tie it in both of her loves, she was overjoyed. If only more world ending threats involved the stars and magic. Spike! she said, swirling around to face her assistant and struggled to hide her enthusiasm at the idea of two days of intense studying. Do you know what this means? Um, you uncovered some old myth about this dead queen and want me to inform Queen Celestia? No, uh, well, yes. I need you to take a letter, she said, slamming the book shut and assuming that Spike thought of at her proper diction prose while he dutiful dutifully <laughs> while he dutifully found the scroll and quills. Dear Queen Celestia, I have uncovered the ev evidence that the dead Queen Nightmare Moon and the Mare in the Moon are in fact the same pony. Not only that, but if the legends are true, then her return imminent. I humbly request that the Summer Sun celebration be delayed until we have enough time to properly investigate and deal with the potential threats. Also, I humbly wish to know if the rumors of her being your sister are true or not, as it would aid my study immensely. Your faithful student, Twilight Sparkle. Got it, Spike said, stabbing the quill 
down to deliver the final punctuation mark at the end of the letter. But really, Twilight, isn't this... Isn't all of this a bit excessive? I mean, the summer so sun celebration is a few days away, and I don't think we should be bothering the Queen with rumors. And asking her to delay the celebration because of a hunch? Especially because you found some rumor that she is your... That she is your sister? Spike. Spike, what are the words on the seal of Equestria? The young dragon sighed. <sighs> Vigilance. Duty, sacrifice, I'll send the ladder. He exhaled his breath and spurted a green flame greedily, devouring the scroll. Still, I don't think bothering the queen over this is a good idea. <clears throat> Duly noted, Twilight said. But you will see the queen has always valued my opinion and diligence. As if on cue, a jet of green fire burst from Spike's lips and Cola sighed into a letter that almost identical to the one that had been sent earlier. The dragon snatched it before it fell to the ground and used his claws to break the seal. My dearest Twilight, Sparkles, you know I always value your opinion, but these last latest claims of yours are completely unfounded. And while the report of my long-lost sister are indeed true, it was also it was Equestria that chose to forget about her, not I. And I can safely say that the rumors of her returns are spurious. You simply must spend less time with those dusty old books. Inside Twilight's brain, a tiny voice screamed in agony. A pony's life should be about more than studying. This is why I am sending you to oversee the preparation of the Summer Sun Celebration in this year's location, Ponyville. Well, Spike said, at least you, tr at least you tried. I am sure there is, there is a friend Equestria. The Queen would be right on it. Don't you see, though? She said, pacing anxiously. The very fact that she has forgotten, has a forgotten sister shows that how much we don't know, and how much more investigation we have to do. This is way more important than going to some town in the middle of nowhere to help oversee a preparation for the Summer Sun Celebration. There is no way in Equestria I am going to abandon my studies here for Ponyville. Her chariot for Ponyville left just after dawn the next morning and Twilight had reluctantly packed her bags to follow the Queen's commands. The town was... The town was... She had decided, after a night of research, a complete mystery to her. Founded in the last century by a group of reclusive farmers, it had quickly developed a reputation, a place where strangers should not dread just why it had been chosen to host a summer sun celebration was another one of the town's mysteries but the queen always has a reason even if they were inscrutable to lesser ponies she and spike flew by the royal chariot across the countryside twilight flipped through the several texts she had selected the night before while Spike looked down at the farmlands, rolling by beneath them. I still don't f see what the big deal is, he said. The big deal is we stand on the precipice of disaster and Celestia is sending me a way to deal with party plans. The fate of Equestria could be in my hooves, and I know next to nothing about the lo this long-lost sister of hers. Don't you think you're, you're overreacting? He said, looking back at her. After all, this isn't the first time you thought there was some big conspiracy against your Equestria. Spike, this is completely different from my 21st birthday party. There's no comparisons. Whatever you say. He spent a few more seconds looking at the mayor, who was both his boss, friend, and closest saying he had to a sister. She was, well, for starters, she was purple, her coat was purple, her mane was three different shades of purple, her cutie mark 
A large starburst sun surrounded by sm five smaller stars was purple. Perhaps the only saying about her that wasn't purple were the whites of her eyes, and he supposed her pupils. But beyond the obvious saying, she was smart, definitely smarter than him, and possibly smarter than the queen. She certainly kept her mentor scrambled to find new things to teach her. When Celestia had filled her apartment with tomes of ancient books for her 21st birthday, Twilight was simply ecstatic. After the fires had been extinguished, of course. And that was the downside of all the, that intellect. It made her more than a bit paranoid. She was always trying to connect everything and find some grand overarching plan, when in his mind there was none. And that tended to cause problems, like with the aforementioned 21st birthday party, which she thought was some great conspiracy to dis disgrace her in front of the queen. Now she had decided that some ancient fowl's tale was harboring of the end times. He sighed. The mayor needed to get out more. You know, he said as the chariot began to descend. Maybe you should go and try to make a few friends while you are out here. Who knows, it might turn out well. Ugh. I don't have time to... Uh, I don't have time to make friends right now, Spike. Not when the world is in danger. Although, once that's dealt with, I promise you I will avert the issue. A sharp jolt shook the chariot, and Twilight looked up to catch her first glimpse of Ponyville. It was an uncharacteristic, gloomy place, built right next to the Everfree Forest. A place most sane ponies knew not to venture. The town seemed perpetually shrouded in dusk, even when the sun was out. The tall, rakish buildings only served to heighten her feeling of foreboding, being she found herself questioning her mentor's reasoning for choosing this town to host the summer sun celebrations. Whoa, Spike said, following her gaze. You know, on second thought, maybe you shouldn't make friends here. This place gives me the creeps. No kidding, Twilight said, as the wheels of the chariot touched the ground. Well, maybe we can rush through our job here and get back to researching. As she spoke, a fog rolled through the town, obscuring her view of the sun and adding to her mounting trepidation. As she walked down Ponyville's empty streets, she suddenly found herself staring into some pony's dead blue eyes. The mare in question was vivid and shocked shade of pink, one not naturally found in nature and her eyes darted nervously from side to side, while random body parts twitched erratically. Um, can I help you? Twilight asked. The mare stared. The mare stared at her for a few more seconds, until her eyes finally rested upon Twilight's cutie mark, at which point her head began to twitch spastically, and with a loud gasp, she bolted off into the fog. Well, that was different, Twilight said to Spike before reassuming her walk. Now, let's see. The first thing we need to do is check on the food preparations. That means we need to go... She pulled out her checklist and map. Oh, good. That means we get to spend some time out of town. The surrounding... The surrounding countryside was no better than Ponyville. Indeed, the moors that surrounded the town were what gave birth to the constant fog, and there were several points during Twilight's journey that she almost lost the road. Remind me to visit the weather ponies to see as soon as we were done here. I don't know how many ponies can live with all this fog. Other ponies got it, Spike said, making a quick addition to Twilight's to-do list. Finally, they arrived at Sweet Apple Acres, although 
So much of the signs had faded away, it was difficult for Twilight to tell if she was at the right locations. Hello? Is anybody here? As soon as the words were spoken, one orange mare came out of the fog. Well, howdy. You must be here to fill a festival, am I right? Twilight took a step back at this, her sudden appearance. Um, you sure are. Can I see what you've prepared? Sure can, she said, taking them to the table surrounded by ponies, each adding their own dish to the pile. We got apple pies, apple dumplings, apple fritters, candied apples, sliced apples, apple kebabs, apple tarts, fried apples, and of course, the Ponyville specialty. With the exceptions of the book, Orange Mare, the ponies were pale and muted, their eyes threatening it to a bulge out of their heads as they seemed to be waddled from the table on their disproportionately long limbs. Twilight didn't know if she had found the effect of comical or unnerving. Let me guess, Twilight said. It's some sort of apple? Nope, Applejack said, walking towards a silver platter and pulling off the cover, revealing a thin brown strip of something. Twilight almost certainly didn't recognize it in its own juices. It's meat. It's meat. Twilight's heart suddenly found herself lodged in her throat, and the mare felt as if she was about to pass out. Sorry, did I just hear that you say that Ponyville's special dish is meat? Sure is, the orange mare said still perpetually smiling. Folks here had to deal with a lean times twenty years back and, well, ain't nobody complained if a couple of cattle went missing. And it turns out that meat is, was actually pretty tasty. So it kind of became our favorite dish for special occasions. Care for a bite? No, that's... that's okay. She said nervously, taking a step back. I ate on the way here. She spoke, her stomach growling, giving her away her lie. Oh, come on, I promise. It ain't that bad. And all we're asking is just one bite. I promise. You'll like it. But if you want to go about shrinking the duties of the queen I gave you, and I suppose it can... As the orange one spoke, the other ponies slowly made their way to surrounding Twilight, neatly circling around her without her notice. Twilight groaned, unable to find a way out of this, and began to fear for her own safety. Just one bite. Okay. <laughs> she levitated a fork and knife towards her, and with a great care, she cut off a small piece of meat, imagining before bringing it to her mouth as her teeth ripped into the flesh and the juices ran down her throat. She found herself surprised by how much she enjoyed the taste. Certainly, she thought ponies were mostly herbivores, but what harm was there in having a bit of meat every now and then? No, that meat came from something, something with a mind and feelings. It was so good without thinking. Her knife and fork moved to cut off a larger slice before she stopped herself. It's... it's not bad, she said, almost reluctantly, worried about that her adamants would somehow doom her. The apple smiled as one, their faces twisted into a grotesque mockery of a regular smile. Have a nice day, they said in unison with Applejack, gesturing towards the platter again. Have some more, they said in unison, with Applejack, gesturing towards the platter again. No, that's okay. Thank you, though. Twilight said, sprinting out of the farm's gate and jostling towards the other ponies. 
wrapping Spike in her, her telekinetic field as she fled the farm. So, he said as they fled the field, how did you like your first taste of meat? Was it steak? Steak is the best. Spike! She said suddenly, coming to a halt and throwing the tiny dragon on her back. I can't believe what I am hearing from you. Does the queen approve of you eating flesh? Sure she does. A growing dragon has a diet he needs that can't be met by eating grit gemstones all day. So she makes sure I keep to keep the royal pantry stocked for me. Informative, she said, as she resumed her walk through the ever-thickening fog. And slightly disturbing, although I suppose it's no less disturbing than anything else that's happened in this town. He laughed. Yeah, Celestia sure knew how to pick them, right? I mean, a few years ago, the celebration was in a town in the desert that was raided by a buffalo, and now we, we are in the spooky capital of Equestria. Twilight was surprised to find herself smiling at the joke. She didn't find it particularly humorous. But... She supposed, after the day she had been having, she could take any excuse she could to smile. Perhaps it was a nervous reaction. Spike, you know she has been trying to make the more remote areas of Equestria feel included these past few summer celebrations, and I suppose it doesn't get more remote than this. Yeah, I know, he said, kicking at a pebble. On the ground, the two walked for some time in silence until Twilight suddenly stepped into a pool of water. Spike, she said, how long do you think we'll be, we've been walking? He shuddered. I don't know, about an hour, maybe? Twilight swallowed hard, working to keep her gro groaning pains in check. And how long did it take us to get to Sweet Apple Acres? Definitely not half an hour. He paused at realizations. We're lost, aren't we? She nodded and looked down at the marshlands as she stepped in. I certainly don't recall having to cross any bogs on the way out of town. What do we do? Well, she said, we could stay here and wait for the bog to go away, or some pony to find us, or we could walk in a straight line in the hopes that we either find the town or getting out of the fog. I think the latter would be better. Agreed, he said. I don't exactly like the idea of some pony from Creepyville finding us while we are all alone. They resumed their walking as an unnatural cold began to sink in the twilight skin. Sp Spike, she said, w why is it so cold in the m middle of summer? I don't know, he said shivering. Can we maybe make a fire somewhere? Where, she said. We spent the last hour walking through marsh and brushes when I'm not walking through f freezing water. I am walking through a brunch of thorns and are cutting through my fetlocks. Maybe we could get some of the brushes and light it on fire. Not in this fog. No, we co couldn't. Now come on. Let's get back to walking. Something swooshed over their heads, and for the first time in what felt like hours, they could see the sun shining down on them. It swooshed again and the two could see rainbow-colored flying above them, working to clear out the fogs in a few minutes' time. It had managed to clear the skies before landing. On close inspections, the blur turned out to be a scion blue, Pegasus, with a rainbow-colored mane and tail. Just what the hell you think you're doing out in the moors? Do you know how easy it is to get lost out here? Um, yes, actually, yes I do. Are you the weather captain? The blue pegasus nodded. Okay, first of all, 
Thank you for rescuing us, and second of all, why did you let things get so foggy? It... Isn't the sky supposed to be clear for your job? It sure is! But something about the sun, being over Merland, turns the whole place into a foggy city. I can try and clear it up, but it comes back in an hour. Only time, decent view of the sky, is at night. Twilight stopped for a second as her mind went back to her reading yesterday. Okay, she thought. It's a bit of a coincidence that just yesterday I was reading about how Nightmare Moon wanted more ponies to enjoy her night. And I now found myself in a town where the sky is only visible at night. But it's... But it is important that I don't go running off with unfamiliar assumptions. What? It, that is how we got get disasters like my last birthday party. Besides, the scion continued, no pony is crazy enough to visit sweet apple acres during the day. Even the apples don't head into town after dawn. Of course, Twilight said. Well, Miss Rainbow Dash. Miss Rainbow Dash. I really do have to get back, so would you be so kind as to guide us back into town? Yeah, sure, she said, flopping her wings a few times to hover into the air. Just follow me and you'll be back in Ponyville in no time. She wasn't wrong about that, and Twilight found herself struggling to keep up with the mare. And by the time she made it back into town, she was cold, bloodied, and now exhausted. At least, she didn't have to leave the town anymore. She fought as she walked through the outskirts of town, the fog already rising through from the moorlands. So, Twilight said, shivering, You seem friendlier than most of the ponies around here. Can you tell me why the sound is so weird? Rainbow Dash supplied. I was trying to say diplomatic. Dash laughed. It's alright, the most the ponies here are, take a little while to warm up for strangers. And they do have a bunch of customs and traditions that seem strange to outsiders. Throw in that these weird moorlands. And it's kind of like a no-brainer that these ponies think the town is spooky. Pardon me for asking, but were you born here? Because you seem a bit less... She trailed off. Struggling to find a diplomatic synonymy for creepy. Culty than the other ponies around here, Spike said, causing Twilight to groan. Nope, she said. Cloudsdale born and raised. I only came here because they needed a new weather captain. And then it turned out that my only real responsibility was to make sure it rained on time. Still, the ponies here are... She paused, eyes sh shifting back and forth, scanning the surrounding environment. Nice. Real nice. Just nice? Twilight said, certain that Dash was intended to say something else. Yep, just nice. She flapped her wings to rise higher into the air. Oh, hey, look at the time. There is a cloud I have to kick. Um, I'll see you at the summer sun ceremony. I guess. It's a celebration! Twilight yelled at the Pegasus flew off and to the distance. Well, at least she didn't seem too crazy. Yeah, he said, pulling out her to-do list. And that takes care of the weather ponies as well. I am thinking we go check out the decorations at the city hall. On the way back into the library, then spend a couple hours or so resting. That sounds great, Twilight said, floating the list above her. Hopefully this rarity has everything under control. So I can go and bandage my hooves. Several failed attempts to navigate Ponyville's bizarre Byzantine street layouts. Twilight finally reached the town hall. The decorations are very black, Twilight said as she stepped inside, looking up at the, the more banners hanging in the town hall. Well, of course, darling, the white unicorn said, hanging up another banner. I used only the finest black velvet for these banners, and more, and spent days embroidering the stars, making sure they are up, are just right. 
It is of the utmost importance that the stars are right. The stars will aid in our escape. Twilight looked nervous and stepped backwards, the words racing through her head. Well, I love accuracy so much as the next mare, but why are you focusing so much on the stars for the summer sun celebration? The unicorn rarity just laughed. Why, dear, Ponyville has always had a strong connection to the stars. Just look at the town seal. She pointed towards the seal emblazing in the center of the, of the room. A drawing of the town at its right, six stars watching over the town as it slept. Around the borders were the words, the town shaped by stars. Without a second thought, Twilight ran out of the room. This is bad, Spike. This is really bad. Twilight said, she, her mind filled with unpleasant thoughts. The night will fall. What's the, what's the big deal? Spike asked, clutching on the Twilight back as the mare raced through the town winding street. So they got, they like the night sky. That should be a good thing. Do you considering how much you like astrology? The dead queen arise. Don't you see? She said. The stars must be right. The fog, it's always obscured. The sun. Their strange customs. This isn't a town. It's a cult. And they are working towards Nightmare Moon's return. The nightmare will reign eternal. And even as we speak, Queen Celestia is flying right into whatever they have. Plan. And it will be my fault. Twilight, you are being paranoid again. She whipped her head back to stare at him. Her pupils had sunk, shrunk to, down to pinpricks and a few errands, errant hairs had popped out of her mane. I am not being paranoid. Yep, he fought as they race, raced towards the library. Dusk falling across the land, 21st birthday party all over again. Hopefully the Equestria military won't be called out this time. Okay, Twilight said as she burst through the door to the library. We need to send a letter to the Queen, and then get out of here. That's a very good idea, some pony said as the lights were suddenly switched on. Twilight turned to examine the intruder. It was the same pink pony from this morning. Her mane was perfectly straight, hiding one of her eyes. And more alarmingly, a network of white scars, tissues, crisscrossed her body. She decided that it would be, would be very good idea to leave the library. It's okay, the pink mare, the pink pony said. I'm friendly, well, friendlier than every pony else in this town. But, you need to leave. That's when, what's important. You have to get out of this town right now. And never let the Cult of Nightmare find you as long as you live. But why? Twilight asked, gesturing for Spike to find a quill and scroll upstairs. The ritual is going to take place tonight. It, it's much more important that I inform the Queen about what is happening. The pink pony cackled for a mo almost a minute. She still doesn't see, does she? No, no. Should we tell her? Ruin the surprise? Oh, oh, we must. She said to herself, as she moved towards the bookcase, She must know her role in the scheme of things. The stars was, was right. And right they are. But it's not the stars above that she should be worried about. No, those stars bend to her will. For her will is the stars. As she spoke to herself, she grabbed a thick black volume from the shelf brought it before Twilight, flipping through the pages after page, as she did. You'll see, you see, with your own eyes, that the stars will aid in her escape. Twilight grabbed the book in her telekinetic field, her sense of self-preservation, overwhelmed by the chance to see a new book of lore. The second she had in her grasp, a sense of revolution, revulsion filled her. It was bounded with real leather. 
and the words seem to dance and shift before her eyes, making her head hurt the longer she looked at them. That didn't matter, though. Twilight's eyes were transfixioned on the illustrations the pink pony was pointing towards her the image of a purple sunbur starburst surrounded by five smaller stars. The stars will aid in her escape, she said, laughing again. <laughs> now you will see the stars they spoke of. Now you will see your role here yeah, and why you must leave. You've consumed the sacraments. The altar is readied. All they ha they need now is you. Sacrament, she said, already knowing the answer. The thrice blessed flesh of the dead queen attuned her spirits to hers. Already the whispers inside your minds drawing you to your doom. You must flee and flee now. Take your dragon and never return to this town. As the pink pony spoke, a crash came from the upstairs window, and Twilight heard Spike's muffled screams. Be sure you don't hurt anyone, Rainbow. Even the traitor Pikamina. We all have important roles to play tonight. Oh, aren't you just the cutest baby dragon ever? A faint voice from upstairs said, Go, and go now, Pinkamina said. I will hold him off and buy you more time. But what about Spike? Fluttershy will be sure not to harm him. Your fate is less clear. And as your fate goes, so does Equestria. She picked up a large candlestick and laughed, swinging it towards the stairs. They won't be taking me back to the dark and the madness so easily. <laughs> Saying an apology to Spike. Under her breath, she fled, racing towards the street of Ponyville, heading towards the town's exit. As she ran, her legs felt leaden and cold from earlier return for vengeance. She ignored it. At that moment, the only saying that mattered was fleeting Ponyville, and Twilight Sparkles never failed at something she had. She set her mind to. As she reached the last house in Ponyville, she saw the one thing in Equestria that could give her pause. Queen Celestia's personal chariot sat on the outskirts of town, adorned in gold and rubies, and complete and utterly abandoned. Twilight wanted to run. She even considered abandoning the queen to her fate, certain that the queen of light and fire could handle a few crazy, crazed cultists. And if not, the cultists would take their blood revenge on her. Break your mentor, your friend, and your rightful sovereigner. Just as she broke her sister. And it will be all your fault. All your fault. She closed her eyes. She knew what she had to do. She had to save the queen in Equestria. No matter the risk. If she could reach the queen. She knew Celestia would protect could protect her, and together they could stop the crazed cultist's ritual. Giving one last sign, she turned and ran back towards the town. As she ran, the setting sun burned through the fog, setting the world around Twilight ablaze. Soon the stars would be out, and the cultists would put their plan into action. Soon the world would pl be plunged into eternal darkness, unless Twilight could find the Queen and warn her. She was confident that with two of them working together, there would be no problem that they couldn't solve. Each step towards the town center warned her frozen limbs and filled her with a second wind as she ran towards the center of the Summer Sun Celebration in the heart of the cult's activities. If she hurried, she could get there before nightfall. Running faster than she ever had in her life, she completely ignored the group of cultists blocking selected streets and guiding her towards the town hall. The chant that filled the air became nothing more than a faint background noise to her. Twilight didn't have time for her doubts. She could not fail the queen. 
the door to town hall slammed open as twilight ran through them, and she saw a tall alabaster mane, mare with, aurora, with an aurora mane standing on the far side of the center pavilion. There was still a time she could she fought as she sprinted toward the queen. Queen Celestia! We have to get out of here! The whole town is... She froze. As her back legs crossed the town seal. Not just froze, she realized she couldn't move a single muscle. She couldn't talk, she couldn't blink. She was no longer sure that she could breathe. Inside her chest, her heart was still. A part of the cult that worshipped my long vanquished sister, Celestia said, turning to her face, turning to face her students. Yes, Twilight, I know, and I thank you for coming. For a few minutes there, I wasn't sure you would. Celestia gave a faint smile, a smile. Twilight always fought, masked a deep and for profound sadness. The smile she had whenever she looked at the moon. The smile she gave when she told her followers that I had been vanquished. Twilight tried to ask why, to furrow her brow, to show her confusion. She tried to do anything at all, even the faintest flicker of an eyelash would have been a positive change at this point. If you are curious, you won't die. I think I wanted to be sh to make sure this would be as easy and as painful for you as possible. You will ascend, and then my beloved sister will take possession of your body, forcing you to exist as a shadow in the back of your mind. In fact, you're, you and my sister should be able to communicate. And I hope the two of you will get along after she has been redeemed. She smiled. I would like that very much, in fact. She moved towards forward and nuzzled Twilight's cheek. It had always been her way of showing affection towards her students. But now it only served to heighten her shock and fear. It... She paused. You are my favorite student, Twilight. Are my favorite student. I think it would kill me to watch you wither and die like every pony else. While knowing that I could have saved you, preserved a, a fragment of you while redeeming my sister. There have always been so many wonderful ponies who, since I banished her. So many I was honored to call my friends. And to a mare that died, every one of them rotted away before my eyes, and leaving me with this much emptier. And each time I buried them, I would see the moon and know that I had banished the one mare I could share my burden with. That this pain was my own fault, and so I vowed to make it up for her. As she spoke, the doors opened again, and five more mares entered. Rainbow Dash, the orange mare from Sweet Apple Acres, the white unicorn entered of their own accord, while Pink Amina was bound and dragged into the room. At the head of the process, the yellow pe pegasus that with flowing pink manes, Celestia turned and greeted her with a smile. Ah, uh, High Priestess Fluttershy, I am so glad you can make it. The Pegasus blushed. Of course, my queen. You know we would do anything to free your sister. The two of you must be so lonely without each other. Your kindness and sincerity humbles me, she said, gracing the Pegasus with a smile. Is it time yet? So soon enough, she said. The stars aren't quite right yet. I would hate to rush things. Will the vessel be okay waiting? She can wait, Celestia said. The spell keeps her frozen in time. 
so there is no risk of harm coming to her. And as for me, I appreciate having a chance to explain myself to her. Fluttershy nodded and patted Celestia's forelegs, reassuring her. Please, don't be too hard on yourself. I am sure in a few years, Twilight will be great, perfectly happy with the new arrangement. You are gracing her with the greatest gift known to Ponydom, royal blood, and eternal life. And through her we are redeeming two-thirds of the celestial tri triarchy. What great fate that she should be so honored. She turned to address Twilight. You have to understand just how ecstatic Celestia was when she told found you. The incarnation of the stars themselves, the one that would that was prophesized. The only one who could help redeem her sister. Who knows, in a few years you might be able to achieve divinity on your own. But now I am afraid we must accelerate the process. The moon is closer to Equestria than it has been in been, and even as we speak, even as we speak, a connection is format. Boring, Rainbow Dash said. Get to the part where do our magics, saying to purify the dead queen. The gift of the heart's blood from the manifestation of harmony, Celestia said. The sacrifice of five and one where you bind your fates to her. It it is amazing just how often the symbol of five and one appears when researching this ritual. The position of the stars, your cutie mark, and finally the path of exercising the nightmare that has taken hold of my sister. You are doing a great thing, and I will make sure the realm never forgets your name. Not that it matters, Rainbow Dash said. Because as soon as the ritual is done, we will get to live as long as Luna does, right? And that means we get to live forever. I won't let pon ponies forget about me. I'm sorry to interject, the f white unicorn said, but I do believe the stars are, are now. I do believe the stars are now right in the skies, and it is, as they say, now or never. Celestia nodded, and the six began to chant. Twilight felt her light hair on the back of her head, her neck, stand up as the room filled with magical energy. The stars, her stars, she realized, filled with her, her with the power she had never felt herself rising above the petty mundanity that had been her life up until now. The moment she expanded ever outwards, filling the whole of the firmament, firmament. The stars twinkled with her laughter. She had always loved the night sky, and now she was the night sky, free to watch the world turn by, to see all that transpired beneath her, and yet she was also something else, a small mare of flesh and blood and bone, and sinew, a mare whose body was breaking as the power of malevolent god was funneling through her horn, growing and reshaping her flesh to their will, as a new consciousness took seat in her mind and obliterating everything she had once thought of as her own. The long nights of studying, the days spent sitting next to the queen in the basket of her radiance, the face of her friends and family, and all the things she hoped she might accomplish were burnt away, and forcing the thing that was once called itself Twilight Sparkles to hide in the shadows of the new consciousness. At that particular moment, the stars found themselves wishing that they could scream.